Good morning and welcome to a Monday morning edition of Coffee with Rich, which is brought to you by the American Warrior Society. And if you want to find out more about the American Warrior Society, please go to AmericanWarriorSociety.com and find out if becoming a member of our self-defense community is the right thing for you. If you're just joining us for the first time, my name is Rich Brown. I'm the co-host, co-founder of the American Warrior Society and the American Warrior Show, America's leading self-defense podcast. I'm a retired Marine Corps officer, former police officer, corrections officer, and yeah, special operations officer. Looks like we got folks jumping on already. If you're jumping on the show, please let me know who you are, where you're from. If you're a coined member of the American Warrior Society, let me know what coin number you are. As you can see, I'll be joined at some point this morning by Mr. Mike Seeklander, who's running to the gun safe to grab some guns. I said, let's talk about some, some cool products that Wilson Combat has out. And uh, so he's grabbing those out of the safe right now. And while we're waiting on Mike to join us, let's talk about our sponsors. Mike and I are very fortunate to have the following sponsors that support what we do here at the American Warrior Society and the American Warrior Show. Sponsors like Century of Martial Arts, makers of the Bob XL. Bob XL is an amazing training tool. I don't have to tell you guys because most of you out there watching or listening today already have a Bob XL. But if you don't, let's talk about it for just a second. It's a big, scary humanoid target. It makes an amazing three-dimensional target to shoot at. It makes an amazing striking tool. Uh, you can choke Bob. You can do a lot of stuff. You can kick Bob. Heck, he doesn't mind. Go ahead and check out the American Warriors, uh, the American Warrior Show.com. And on the right hand side of that page, you'll find a deep discount to get your own Bob shipped to you just in time for Christmas. We all have APPHemp.com, which is Appalachian Standard, makers of the finest CBD products money can buy. And I'm constantly asked, Rich, does it really work? Yes, it really works. I don't smoke the flower I have. If you're into that, you could, they have vapes. I think my wife was vaping the pumpkin spice vapes this fall. So they have a lot of amazing products, tincture to put under your tongue, salves. They do everything in-house. They are artisan half craft hemp growers. Uh, my good friend, Jesse Ross, et cetera, over there, this family. We've got 23 fo folks joining us already. As you can see, Mike is getting out his guns. Look at that. So we're going to be talking about some amazing guns that Wilson Combat has. So if you wanted to show up to the gun show, you showed up to the right one. We got Tony on from Brunswick, Georgia. David Garrett. Good morning, David. Good to see you, sir. Coin number 1896 from South Carolina. Will Parker is on coin number 800 from beautiful Montana. If you want to know what a coin number is, please check out AmericanWarriorSociety.com. Also, one of the things I'm doing this morning is I'm sharing this on the American Warrior uh, Society Facebook page and shooting performance. So let me know which one you're coming from because I've never done that before. Jeremiah is on. Good morning, gents. He says, coin number 2109 from Ohio. Mine and Mike's brother, Jeff Brown, is on down there. Key West says, don't say I'm against community standards. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if, if you guys remember it, but last Friday when Will and I went live, a lot of people said, that for whatever reason they were getting these warnings that that their post saying good morning was violating community standards. So we have a broken algorithm. Memphis Beach is on. Good morning, Memphis. Great to see you, sir. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful day in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Dr. Gordon Bodson is on. Jason Johnson is on. Thank you, 25 folks. Let's keep talking about our sponsors, then we'll get into today's show. Sponsors like the Cool Fire Trainer, man. The Cool Fire Trainer. Why dry fire when you can cool fire? Dry firing is so 1980s. Nobody does that anymore. Everybody's cool firing. Please check out Cool Fire Trainer. It's your gun, your sights, your grip panel, your sweet little uh, Timony trigger. It's your gun. All you got to do is replace the barrel and the recoil spring to get felt recoil. Please check that out. Let's have Mountain Man Medical. Man, I tell you what, I'm watching the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and Kyle's running down the road with his medical bag trying to help people and look what happened. So if you're going to be able to plug holes, guys, you, you, you know, if you're going to be able to make holes, you got to be able to plug holes. So check out Mountain Man Medical for the cost of taking a family of five out to dinner. You can pick up our co-branded trauma kit. Last but not least, precisionholsters.com. I'm wearing my Precision Holsters tactical EDC belt. It is amazing. Uh, and they make the competition line that Mike wears. They also make the Ultra Appendix holster that we both carry. They make amazing products. 
Let's see. Uh, Tony is on. It says, I was warned. So he got the warning from Facebook. Uh, Vicky is on. It says, hey, Rich and Mike. Brian Wall, our good friend, is on. Simplify Brian. Coin number 2031. Rasmic is on. Mike, we're going to, this is the gun show, is it not? Yes, this is the gun show, man. I'm actually trying to pull up the comments for those of you commenting. I don't have my mouse today because Rich is making me use the microphone, so I don't have control. So I'm trying to watch the comments on my iPad so I can see at least some of our esteemed guests and members jump on. So, Yeah, Vicky says, the cool fire rocks. Rasmic says, good morning, Mike. Greg says, morning from beautiful Ohio. A good friend, David Brothers, is on coin number 1997. 29 folks joining us live, Mike. Good morning, uh, Rasmic, David, uh, everybody else I saw jump on. Maybe uh, Alan's on this morning. Who else was on? David, I heard was maybe a, heard the name out there. So good morning, folks. Hopefully my sound is okay. I, I can't use my mouse and adjust, but uh, I got a great little video camera. I kind of dig my video. I'm actually loving that, which would be good for today because we're going to show some cool guns. And I think we're live on both our American Warrior Society and Stream Performance Facebook pages. So whichever one you're on, please Click the share. Maybe if someone would throw this into the um, the training addicts group and the coin members groups and the stuff like that. So, um, man, yeah, here we are. All right, brother. <clears throat> I'm going to kind of let you take it away. But before I do, let's read Mike's uh, bio. I always like to do that. So folks that are watching may be new to this. They don't know your who your pretty face is. So currently, Mike Seeklander is the owner of Shooting Performance LLC. You can find more about that at www.shooting-performance.com, which is a full-service training company and the American Warrior Society. Mike is also the co-host of the Best Events, the Outdoor Channel's leading firearms instructional show. Previously, Mike was Chief Operating Officer and Director of Training and Senior Instructor at the United States Shooting Academy in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was directly responsible for the development of all U.S. SA training programs. Part of that, as an employee of the federal government, Mike has served as branch chief and lead instructor for the firearms division of the Federal Air Marshal Service, as well as a senior instructor at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, FLETC. His extensive formal training and experience at all phases of military and law enforcement training, Mike is a highly sought after tactical and competitive trainer and a high level performer on the competitive handgun circuit. Currently, a nationally ranked competitor on the practical handgun competition circuit. C. Cleaner has authored, produced, et cetera, instructional books, DVDs, and has developed hundreds of lesson plans specifically related to basic and advanced firearms training. As a local law enforcement officer with the Knox County Sheriff's Department, as well as the Knoxville Police Department, Mike worked in corrections as well as patrol and the organized crime division. In 1990, Mike joined the United States Marine Corps and was trained as an intelligence specialist with a top secret clearance, folks. Mm. Mike is a combat veteran of Desert Storm, Desert Shield. He holds secondary MOSs of combat engineer and primary marksmanship instructor. Mike is a recipient of numerous awards and honors in the law enforcement community and as a professional shooter. His shooting accomplishments are too numerous to list. Having completed in the shooting sports nationally, Mike adds to his experience with more than 15 years of experience in various martial arts, holding multiple ranks, including a black belt and Okinawan freestyle and a purple belt, impressively enough, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I see a bunch of people are on shooting performance page, too, but it looks like the American Warrior Society page is beating the SP page right now. So interesting. Yeah, Chad Ray says he, uh, that he figured I would have had that memorized by now, your bio. You should have. I'm working on it. Donald Green says, good morning it from Liberated, Virginia, coin number 1376. David David Garrett said, that's a, a hell of a lot of resume there. Very impressive. Miss Lisa, my beautiful bride, is on. She says, oh, hey, it's Mike. I know him. Good morning. Mike, today's the gun show. We promised people that we'd do a little show and tell, my friend, and I'm going to let you talk about Wilson Combat. Not let you talk about because I can't wait to hear it. Wilson Combat and some of the handguns that they're running right now. Can you take it away? Well, sure, man. Um, where do where do you want to start? I mean, I I have um, I've got a bunch of guns. I grabbed quickly for those of you that don't know. Rich actually does a really organized job of sending out show notes, but I didn't get it till this morning. So at the last minute, I said, "Well, let me actually get guns." This is the video show, so it's foolish not to have guns. So with that said, I can also get any other guns you want to see today from Wilson Combat because if we're going to talk about the guns. We might as well show you. So if there's something you want to see that I didn't grab. You're just going to have to be patient and Rich will talk about some stuff or you could pour a cup of coffee and I'll get some more stuff. So I have, um, <clears throat> man, I have a, 
have a bunch of stuff here. I'll tell you. Um, let's can we start? Can we start with flintlocks? Do you have uh, Wilson yeah, Comet? Well, we can start with flintlocks, but unfortunately, Rich uh, Wilson Comet doesn't make flintlocks that I know of. Um, uh, okay. So no, we we can't actually start with flintlocks. Maybe next show. Um, okay. But, but what we can start off with is exactly what I plan to go to the range with today, uh, and I'll tell you why as well. So let me pull guns out. I don't have a lot of space here. Um, I've got a couple of guns that I'm going to shoot today. These are actually, uh, you would say both the EDC X9 series, but this is actually called the Xperior. So this is a different branded style of X, uh, X9. It's not actually an X9, but it's very similar in look. So I've got two guns today. I'm actually probably going to take these to a class in Arizona. I'm teaching a class with Mr. Rob Latham. By the way, if you're going to that class, I can't wait to see you out there. There are still maybe two slots left. So if you have some free time and some free, free ammo or you got ammo, try to get out there. It's a really good class called the Bigger Circle. It's the last class of the year. So um, this is a standard EDC X9. You can see it's a standard length gun. I don't have the new SFX9 yet. Um, and uh, it's a pretty darn cool little pistol. If you can see this one actually has the new Holo Sun uh, 550 or H 550 or whatever K X2 site. This is their little micro site. Now, I, I'm not a promoting whole sun. I'm not sponsored by them. I can't tell you this is would be a carry gun site yet because I haven't shot it enough. So I need to put another five or 600 rounds through this gun and make sure everything is solid as can be. So I'll, I'll be doing that today. I got to replace the battery and, and go out and shoot it. Standard X9 with a light rail. Pretty darn cool gun. Um, and if you notice, uh, one of the things about these two guns is this actually has an, the original internal extractor. This has an external extractor, so we call this the reliability tune gun. The slide rails and frame fit are a little bit different, meaning there's a little less contact. So in theory, the slide travels freer, although all of my 1911s are standard 9 millimeters, my 40s, my 45, they're, they're pretty much 100% guns. And there's no pistol out there that's 100% reliable. Um, the Xperia is a different model. So you get the front cocking serrations. Rear cock insurations. In this case, I've got a different hollow sun on it. Uh, and this one is actually set up much like I would set up a carry gun. You can see the rear sight and the front sight. So I've got a lower co witness set of front and rear sights on the gun. Um, I actually have the big optic on. If you don't know what that means, you can ask me that. So, and I can't see all your questions right now, folks. So if you have a question, please um, throw it up there. So those two pistolas. Um, and we'll also, of course, Shoot a little bit of iron sights today. So I'll probably take an iron sight and an optic gun to the class. So that's the standard X9 with the iron sights um, compared to, of course, the one with the optic. So really pretty much the exact same model. Just one has an optic, one has iron sights on it. So I'll shoot them both. Uh, and, you know, as Rich feeds me questions, we can talk about optics on handguns. Well, let's talk about that because Alan has a question. He says, I see red dots on my eyes. I'm leaning toward red dot optics. Do you prefer them over regular sights? So... <clears throat> So let me, so let's talk about optics. First of all, um, there are a lot of people out there that are going to an optic because they're trying to solve the problem with their vision. Like they can't maybe clearly see the front sight anymore. And they think, you know, I'm going to put an optic on the gun and now I can actually look through the window of the optic and that's going to solve all the problems. That's not the case necessarily. And here's the deal. It, at closer ranges, you're probably going to be faster and more consistent with iron sights than you would be with an optic. So what's the benefit of, of an optic? Well, optic does a few things for you. Uh, assuming, let me back up. An optic will do a few things for you, assuming you put the train time in. So that's rule number one. If you're watching this video, you're, or you're watching it later on uh, YouTube or hear the podcast, so we do this a podcast. Number one, if you're gonna put an optic on a carry gun, you have to commit the time to training with it. And I'm not talking about just shooting, although shooting is super important. I'm talking about literally learning how to present the handgun, you know, from one handed position to a two handed position to your support handed position to around, a, a, you know, a, a piece of cover or whatever else. Because uh, I want you to think about this for a second with an iron sighted gun. Um, as the gun comes up in front of your face, you always see the iron sights. Right. So you always know if the iron sights are aligned or misaligned uh, with an optic, assuming it, even if you have a backup iron sight. If you're off at a slight angle, just a little bit left or right or up or down, the dot literally disappears, like just a teeny bit. And, and you can't necessarily see that in the window. Now, in the case of, um, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, in the case of this, this optic and that other small optic, 
I actually have the dot turned on so it's not just the center dot, but a bigger circle as well. So if I have the gun in front of my face and it's off a little bit, I might see the outer edge of the circle. It's it's actually a pretty cool feature that Hollow Sun offers. But you have to put the train time in. And then the second part of the equation is, what do you get out of it? Well, you do get probably increased or enhanced accuracy. It's easier to aim with an optic because it's a single point sight where iron sights are three points of focus, where you have the front sight, rear sight, and the target somewhere, theoretically. Uh, the, uh, optics will make you a better shooter in the long run if you practice with them because the optic will show you more movement on the handgun. So you're learning more as you fire the handgun because you see more movement. The gun doesn't move more. You just see more movement because the optic, because of the, hol uh, the holographic image, translates that movement to the gun. So and, uh, Alan, I think, asked that question. Yes, if you're willing to put the time in, you get the right optic, you absolutely positively have to have a set of backup iron sights. Something else that you can aim with if you need to, if the optic fails, and also to pull your eye into the sight. So I know that was a long-winded answer, but um, but that, that's the answer I would give. So. No, it's a good answer. And one of the things that you brought up and makes me want to ask, Mike, I, I, I don't, you know, I own a red dot. I played with it for a month or two and kind of put it away. But one of the questions I have is, are you looking at the target and then the dot is superimposed on it? Or are you looking at the dot and the target's fuzzy? Can you explain that? Yeah, to some good, good question. So if you're using an optic, the, the, the really the only way to use a, a, a single uh, power plane or focused optic, meaning nothing without, this does not have any kind of magnification, is to look at the target. So when I'm, you know, I have a little target up by my uh computer my wall here because I normally stand up and teach some of my lives in, the, in this little room. But when I'm aiming, I'm literally, I, my focus never shifts from uh, my eye or the target, you know, to the dot itself or the circle or the reticle or whatever you have. The, the vision, my visual focus always stays on the target. So if you're using an optic, that's the way to shoot it. That's the benefit of having it is that single focal, focal plane on the target itself or on the thread, if you will. So just be aware of that when you're when you're doing that, you you see the, the dot, you see the optic itself, the, the 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 dot or the circle or whatever you have, but, but I'm not visually focusing on it. I'm visually focusing on the target, if that makes any sense. No, it does make total sense. So um, so we talked a little bit about optics. What what uh, MOA dot are you running, Mike? Or what, what well, um, so and another pistola here. By the way, this is a full-size uh, EDC X9L. So this is what they call the L. So this, I have a couple different optics, and I, it would look like I'm either sponsored or only shoot holo suns. That's not the case. I have a, about 12 other pistols out in the safe that have uh, delta points on them, Leopold delta points. Um, so to answer your question, the delta point, the standard delta point has a 2.5, I believe, minute of angle dot. It has a single dot. Uh, which I, I tend to shoot a lot. I like the small, precise dot, but they also make, I think the Delta Point, the new Delta Points have a maybe a five-minute dot. I don't own them yet. I'm going to buy one and I'm going to try it because what, what, what I found is a lot of the better optic shooters, Max Michelle and some of those guys out there, tend to shoot the bigger dots. They tend to be a little bit faster. Um, uh, now, this these dots, these are these optics are very unique in that I don't know if I can get this with a camera or not. Uh, see if I get the optic up. Let's go the other way. Uh, there it is. Well, you can kind of see the, the circle. Well, that's really hard to do. But you can see that in the in this optic, there's the center circle, which is probably about, you know, two minute of angle, maybe a minute and a half. And then there's the big circle, which I don't know what it would be. It would be probably 10 MOA maybe or something like that. And I actually... When I run an optic like this, I'm running, I run it just like that. Same thing with the the 510s that I have on my rifle. I'll show you that here in a second. I like having the speed of the big circle as well as the small circle. And then I have the precision of the center dot. So to answer your question, most of the, when I'm using precise aiming points, it's going to be about a two minute, two and a half minute on the delta point or whatever these are, two minute MOA center dot. And the next question Rasmic has is, what distance do you zero your optics? Well, um, good question. So it, it, that depends uh, on the handgun or on the on the PCC or on the rifle because it all varies. So on a handgun, most of my optics are zeroed for about twenty five yards. Uh, on the on my PCCs, like I have a little. Uh, this is actually a 
PCC pistol. So this is an AR pistol, technically. All zero of these guys because of because they're nine millimeter uh, at 30 yards, typically, right around 30 yards. And I'll, I'll know my I'll know the offset at closer ranges as well as the you know the drop at, at farther ranges. And of course, um, just got this little guy, this little upper actually, this little shorty uh, just the other day. Um, I'll zero these at 50 yards, right? So my normal two, two, three, five, five, six will be zero to 50 yards. When I say 50, I should say probably a 50 yard, 5,300 crossover, or whatever, you know, that 50 yard zero based on your velocity and the, the height of the optic is going to be the secondary impact is going to run around, you know, 260 to 300 yards, but it's a flattest trajectory across, across that path. So William asked, would you recommend a Delta point for duty use? Oh, that's a good question, William. Yes, I, I would say I would. I have, um, so all my Delta points have the, the improved or replaced electronics. So I know some of the original Delta points had an electronic uh, circuit board or battery area that, that, that the, the actual, um, uh, what am I trying to say? The metal piece that contacts the battery would slide and recoil sometimes and you, you would lose the dot. I've sent all mine back now except for one and they've replaced the optic or they replaced the internals slightly and did some different things and they're all hundred percent. So yes, I think the Delta point solid. I mean, I know some of um, there are some guys out in, in the law enforcement community at higher levels as well as military using the Delta point pretty successfully. And here's the deal in terms of an optic, all optics are going to break. Eventually you're going to break an optic. Uh, they all break. I've not found any, that are bulletproof. I know the old, the, the RMRs tend to be pretty solid in general. Um, but you know, I, I have, uh, I've had, um, I've had a hollow sun fail. I've had a Delta point fail. Uh, I haven't shot an RMR enough to have it fail, but I've seen them fail in classes, but generally speaking, all of those major companies now are getting to the point where the optics are so robust. Uh, I think they'd be fine on, on a carry gun or a duty gun. If you, Follow those key rules, train with it, as well as have a set of backup iron sights, hopefully in the lower third of the optic window. Excellent. Ruben, our good friend Ruben Amador is on, Mike. Hey, Ruben. He says, how much coffee must one consume to improve my red dot accuracy at 25 yards with the Walther PDP during training? Seven, 17 cups. There you go, folks. 17 cups. We were up to 43 live viewers just a second ago. We're now at 39. Please like and hit that share button. We are just getting started. So if you have a question for Mike, throw it in while we're on this live stream. If you're watching us on YouTube, Coffee with Rich channel, hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Please like and share. Also, if you listen to us on a podcast, make sure you share this content with someone who needs it. Mark Few says, good morning, Rich. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Let's talk about the Wilson EDC X9 and how that was kind of revolutionary for Wilson Combat and then how that has kind of led to some of the other products they're producing now. So I, I probably should have grabbed a standard 1911 to, to compare and contrast. But if you look at the, the X9 series, the X9 was actually sort of designed around a magazine. Uh, Bill had a, and it was, um, I think it was the original Walter, maybe... I, I don't quote me on that. I don't want to misstate that and get in trouble. But he basically, to an extent, designed the gun around a, a certain grip angle and grip feel that that a couple of the old guns used to have. And then they took basically a 1911 style handgun and started to improve little bits and pieces. Now, for example, uh, if you look at this the the EDC line. There's, there are no grip safeties anymore, right? And a lot of folks have a problem with the grip safety. Personally, I don't mind a grip safety. I like a grip safety. I know Rich, when you used to shoot 1911 years ago, you used to have to put a rubber band around your grip safety because you didn't have a good grip or on the handgun, whatever else it was. But the, they, they eliminated that. Um, you can also see on this line and some of the other guns, like the, the EDC9 that I carry, there's an external extractor, right? So that's an external extractor um versus you know the original uh internal extractor because now you can't see the extractor on this exterior line so uh they put an external extractor you know the the theory is that that extractor is a little bit more reliable it's a little bit easier to tune you don't actually have to tune it like you would a normal 1911 extractor which we actually tune more often than not by bending it 
Um, the, the, the series also has, um, these are the originally designed as high cap guns. So these are high cap guns. If you put, you know, standard 15 plus one, or you could put the 18 plus one magazines, uh, in the gun itself. Uh, this one has rails on it and, uh, you know, what we call a, I guess a tri top kind of slide top end where the exterior has more of a round top end, different serrations. You can see the X patterning in the slide. So a lot of these X patterns and stuff. Uh, you know, that's kind of means X9. So this is the EDC X9. This is the uh, the standard one they came out with first. Of course, you can see the difference in terms of the size. I've got, I've got guns all over the place. So I'm going to compare the, the two guns here. Um, you can see the difference in sizes. So this is the L. This is the big one, The not the most recent one, but the one before that. Uh, and this is the standard size that came out a long time ago. So you, you can see the size comparison of those two guns right they also and i don't have one here i wish i did because i it's probably one of the my favorite guns ever that wilson combat has sent me or had me do videos with is the the new sf x9 which is um stands for solid frame it's basically these guns actually have kind of a unique removable back strap piece and um the these grip pieces are interchangeable so you can put different grips on but there's pretty small grips but the new sf X9 has no grip, so it has a very thin grip feel, which I like a lot. It, it, it mimics the 1911s that I shoot. Um, and by the way, you can switch up the, the back, uh, the beaver tail back strap area for small, medium, or large based on your hand size. All my guns run an ambi safety, right? So I've got an ambi safety so I can manipulate the gun with both hands. Um, but you can choose not to have an ambi safety if you want. So there's a lot of different features. The front sight, you know, on a 1911 used to be dovetail. You would have to drive it out. These actually have a screw so you could pop the front sight out and change the front sight pretty easily. So, um, anyways, that's the X9 series. Sweet. Frank says, if you had to pick one combination gun and sight uh, for IDPA, what would it be? Uh, carry uh, optics, I'm sorry. For So, for IDPA carry optics is yes. the question. Yeah. yeah uh, so Frank and I, I, I could go out and get it in the safe. Like I said, if if Rich gets a bunch of requests for me to go get my carry optics guns or my 40 single stack or nine millimeter, just you got to put it in the comments multiple times. He'll see that, and I'll walk out and get that. I can go get my carry gun as well. But to answer uh, Frank's question, I, it probably still would be the standard 1911 that I shot this year in carry optics and IDPA, which is a, the standard CQB. Mine's a CQB Elite 1911. Uh, standard ex, you know, extractor, grip safety, normal grips. Uh, you know, I have mine set up with the Techwell, Magwell system and the Techwell grips. I could also easily shoot, you know, this gun in uh, carry optics and IDPA. Uh, I I don't mind it. I, I like it. But to be honest with you, I shoot the, the single stacks a little bit better. And they're a little bit different angle. They point slightly different. So I compete with the USPSA 40 caliber single stack so much. And then my nine millimeter single stack and ESP, I carry a single stack gun. Uh, I tend to find that angle works a little better. If not, I would, uh, and I may switch over to this line too. I may, if I shoot care optics next year, you may see me shoot this gun. Um, so it's the standard L model. So, but right now it's the 911. Uh, Memphis among others would like to see Mike's carry gun. Okay, carry gun. What else do you want me to grab? And then Rich can talk about some. Yeah, let's some, let's do. Uh, I'll grab a carry gun. Maybe my carry optics gun. Yes. Anything else, folks? Put a request in. Put your not. request in now. Going once, going twice. Oh, I, and I do have I, I do have our uh, the Wilson Combat optimized grip for the oh, 320 wow. in the top end 320. We can talk about that here uh, in just a second as well. So. Get some little Wilson comments. So, and Rasmic would like to see the flintlock if you can get that out. Too. Yeah, right. Don't have a flintlock. I, man, flintlock, that's coming next. That's y'all put a request and send an email to Wilson comments. So, I'm going to get a carry optic gun and a carry gun. And I'll get a standard 1911 and then we'll go from there. So, Rich, um, talk about our logo, man. Well, tell them, tell them all the stuff on the logo. Yeah. As you can see, Mike and I are very proud of our uh, logo there, the American Warrior Show. If you want to catch, if you want to get some swag, you can get your coin number put on there. Uh, you can actually even get with me if you want to order one of those uh, behind me. We we do that as well. But Skip says, "Good morning." Yeah, our logo when Mike and I were designing this, maybe 2014, 2015, 
we really had a very purposeful thing we were aiming for here. You know, there, there is a little bit of Christian sim symbology going behind that winged lion. Um, so you can look into that if you'd like to, but the, the, the idea that the sword will be inverted is that, you know, it's, it's not something dangerous, but at the same time, we're carrying it with us. And then the circle was kind of a, is the lion stepping into the arena or stepping out of the arena? It's really up to you because I think both are equally important. It's awareness and avoidance as well as stepping in to the fray. So there's some things about our logo. It's not happenstance. We're actually put some thought into that. Raswick, uh, as he says, the flintlock. Yeah, that's, that's funny. That would be, that would be pretty neat. They have, I mean, for hunters, they have muzzle loader seasons. Why not an IDPA match that's flintlock only? I think I think we should see that. Will says I told Susan I would like a Wilson Combat PCC for my birthday. Yeah, you might want to tell her a few times. Those are amazing. Skip says good morning. Thank you to the thirty two folks that are watching us live. Let me know if you get anything from Facebook. Uh, old uh, Uncle Zuckerberg saying that uh, you violated community standards. I know that last week, several people just for saying good morning, gents, or good morning, gentlemen, or whatever, they got uh, flagged by Facebook. So not sure what's up with that. Maybe it's a problem with the algorithm. Let's see. Uh, good morning, sir. I, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I'm going to, I wouldn't even attempt to it. Mr. Bor Brot says, good morning, guys. When I switched from the Glock to the Wilson Combat EDC X9, I found that I failed to get slide lock most of the time, which wasn't an issue with the Glock. What are some good tips and drills to stop riding the slide? Let's, let's throw that to Mike when he gets back. That's a great question. Jeremiah says, I'd like a good look at that PCC Magwell. Yeah, we'll do that. Paul Johnson says, good morning. Rasmus says, my Facebook screen shows 17 live viewers, probably because we're running this on both shooting performance and the American Warrior Society at the same time. Uh, Dave Brothers says, they are on to you, Rich. Yeah, they might be. I'm, I'm especially surprised that the algorithm hasn't picked out the fact that we're showing guns on here this morning and and throwing us off. Alan Kelly says, did you, did I hear Mike mention a Wilson combat SIG 320? Hmm. <laughs> Tony says Facebook artificial unintelligence. Yeah. So Mike is almost ready here. Skip asked a great question. I hope you guys have a backup social media plan. Actually at this time we don't, but we definitely need to. So it looks like we got some really good questions coming in from Mike. I'm going to back these up and we'll get to him uh, as soon as he gets settled in here. Robert says, I got a Facebook violation notice for last week's economic collapse show. We must not criticize our overlords. Wow. Yeah, good point. Daniel says, good morning, Rich and Mike. Uh, David Brother says, does Zuck know, even know what a gun is? Hey, Mike, before you get settled in, man, a lot of questions just came in. I'd like to hit a few of these for you. Sure. This gentleman says, good morning, guys. When I switched from the Glock to the Wilson Combat EDC X9, I found that I failed to get slide lock most of the time, which wasn't an issue with the Glock. What are some good tips or drills to stop riding the slide? Uh, who who'd that question come from? Brock. So Brock switched to an EDC X9? Correct. Yeah. So Brock, if you are, um, if you're not getting slide lock with your EDC X9, then you are, your support hand is, which is very strange because this thing is like, I can't reach the slide lock lever with my thumb and you should not be able to ride the slide lock with your thumb, right? Cause it's way up there. If you can see what that is. So that tells me that your left hand somehow is way up on top of that slide lock, which for me, if that left hand is way up there and forward, I've already taken the left hand away from the back of the gun. So if, I would tell you, Brock, I would check your magazines and your ammo first. Uh, if you just got an ADC, if you're running our magazines in them, they should work perfectly. If not, I would uh, give Wilson Combat a call. But if, you're, if your ammo is not full power, it's not cycling, maybe your gun's dry, uh, maybe you don't have as much grip pressure on the gun as you should, and 
uh, the slide is not able to fully cycle and lock. That's an issue. So check those things out first. Of course, you can always give Wilson a comment and call their customer service is fantastic. But for it not to lock to the rear, that would be extremely rare. Now, a SIG variant, you know, these, I, I personally do not like where the slide lock release lever is on a SIG because it's very easy for my right thumb to ride it. And I think that's kind of one of their design features is so you can release the slide with your, your strong hand thumb if you're a right-handed shooter. But I don't do that anyways. I, when I do a load, I insert and I release the slide with my support hand thumb anyways. Good point. Uh, Jeremiah says, I'd like a good look at that PCC magwell. Okay, so that's actually, I went back out to grab the PCC. Uh, this looks like a Hollywood gun. You know, I keep seeing movies and I always point out the fact that half the time, I watched a really good movie the other day and there was no optic on the gun. And I get so pissed off. Anyways, the reason there's not an optic on the gun is I put it on a new AR that I just got wherever it is laying next to me. Um, but anyways, that's the Magwell. That's the um, that's made by Techwell. So that's a Techwell Magwell. I love Techwell, a great company. Uh, if you can see, it's got a basically a little bolt-on kind of feature. It bolts right onto the bottom. The standard Magwell, comparatively speaking, I'll show you the AR9 pistol. It has some flaring to it, right? Um, but it's not nearly as big as the Techwell Magwell. So that's the standard lower on the AR9 systems that Wilson Combat sells. Thanks, Mike. And Alan says, did I hear Mike mention a Wilson Combat SIG 320? I did. And there it is. Uh, so this is the Wilson Combat optimized low end frame. You can see it's got a pretty neat magwell. We've got some stippling on the front and back. Uh, I actually added some skateboard tape panels because uh, I like a little bit more of an aggressive grip. This is the two-tone dark earth. And then, of course, this is the top Wilson Combat optimized slide. You can kind of see the diamond or X patterning on the gun, both on the top of the slide as well. They actually make a, a compact version now, and I'm pretty sure they have the optic ones. I think I saw an email on that, making sure I was supposed to talk about that. Yeah, but the, they have an optic version as, as well. So, Thank you, Mike. Uh, Giles says, D does Wilson Comet own Chip McCormick still? Yep, as far as I know, unless something's changed, but they bought Chip McCormick and uh, set up shop there pretty pretty close to the ranch down in Texas. Chris says, I like the inverted sword. I explained that, what that meant, Mike. It says, to me, it states, I'm not looking for trouble, but if you bring violence to me, I am ready to answer in kind. Great show. Yeah, that's exactly right. We have the option when we designed the logo to have the line, you know, maybe holding the sword more so to an extent, and we decided not to. We decided we wanted to tip, tip down and, you know, defensive, we don't want any trouble kind of fashion. Uh, Jeff says, does Mike put his pants on left leg or right leg first? Left leg, I think. You heard it here first, folks. Joey says, good morning, gents. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Okay, Mike, uh, take it away, sir. Well, I mean. So, carry gun, please. Okay, so uh, carry gun first. Um, as you can see, I actually have my carry gun in one of our sponsor products. This is the uh, uh, Precision Holsters Seaclander Signature Line. This model is the Ultra Appendix inside the waistband holster. Um, this is the carry gun I'm currently carrying. I have a couple different guns that I carry, but this is the one I carry most of the time. I've already unloaded in a safe area. This is the EDC-9. So for example, if you compare the EDC-9 compared to the EDC-X9, this is a single stack gun. This is a high cap gun. So I typically carry a single stack gun with a nine round magazine, one in the chamber. Um, so I have 10 rounds in the gun and a spare magazine. Every once in a while, I will also carry the EDC X9. So these are kind of interchangeable, interchangeable, interchangeables, I guess, interchangeable. But uh, if you notice, this has the, the standard 1911 style grip safety and standard 1911 grips. So this, the reason, if you're wondering why, why carry this gun? This gun feels in my hand like these guns do. This gun does, right? And this is my USPSA single stack 40. This is CQB Elite. Um, this is the one I primarily shoot in the matches. But notice the grip and everything of this uh, about this feels the same. One of the things we talk about <clears throat> in some of our videos on in the vault is sticking with a uh, family of guns. So, you know, if you can, uh, you know, I prefer to 
have a grip angle and feel that's the same as my carry competition guns, right? Uh, if I were to carry, you know, for example, um, and I'm running out of space here. So you know, if I were to carry something like this, which would be perfectly fine, once I vet once I vet this optic, I might very well carry this. When I get my SFX9, I almost guaranteed will carry that gun because it's fantastic. But you know, this this grip angle is a little different, right? So that's kind of my choice. Um, what else? Do, what what do you want to know about these guns? What do you want to see, folks? See, uh, Guile says I would sell all my firearms just to get one Wilson Combat pistol, especially the 1911 that Mike carries. And that's a great point, Mike. With with the cost of the Wilson Combat being what it is, uh, if there's one that folks should get, is there anyone that you would push them toward or lean them toward? Well, you know, man, I don't know. We we um, I, it's very it, for me, it's very hard to argue with a you know a standard 1911. That's what Bill Wilson started building. That's what we're we're the best at. But you know, they, we he's a, a literally a genius at branching out. I mean, we customize Glocks. We have Glock customizations and slides and variations. We customize the Sig. You know, the the Wilson Combat Optimized. If you're a Sig fan, the Wilson Combat Optimized Grip Frame as well as the slide is fantastic. I mean, it's just really good. Um, this, you know, you could have the the trigger job, all the stuff done if that's kind of your jam. But for, you know, for me. I love 1911s. I compete with 1911s. Um, it would be hard for me to recommend if someone wanted to invest in a Wilson Combat pistol or rifle, a uh, standard probably 1911 or compact 1911. If you're going to carry it, maybe something like, you know, this EDC-9 or maybe uh, my second carry gun is the exact same size, but it's a CQB Elite Compact. So it's just a little bit shorter. These are both aluminum frames, so they're a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to carry. So I would recommend that and probably a, a Wilson Combat AR. This is, by the way, this is a 14.7 inch welded uh, comp, comp or muzzle brake gun. So this one actually is optimized for my suppressor. I keep saying the word optimize. That's technically not. It's The muzzle brake is for the Wilson Combat Whisper Suppressor. Um, this is a fantastic rifle. By the way, I asked Bill Wilson one time, and I'm not sure if it's still the correct answer or not, but I said, what's the most accurate rifle? You know, the shorties, the 12 inches guns, the 14 inch guns, the 16 gun, the 18 inch barrel guns, and he said the 14.7. So the rigidity of this barrel and whatever it is about this particular barrel, this is the most accurate barrel we, we have per bill. That was a while ago, so I'm not sure if that's the case. So I would, I would tell you, if you're looking for an investment this is the deal i mean the year the, i love their ars by the way i i, I am probably if, i don't know if i can say this on facebook i'm actually probably going to be getting rid of one of my old guns i got a couple new ones not uh, high volume not ones that i beat up too much but pretty new so if you're looking for something like this send me a direct message and, and i may actually let go of a 1911 or two because i've got a lot of guns in the safe right now so Okay, Mike, you mentioned a 14.7 inch barrel. Now that sounds like an NFA item to some folks. Can you explain why it is not? Yeah, so well, 14.7 with a welded muzzle brake, so I can't remove the muzzle brake. So that extends it past that NFA length. So this is a non-paperwork legal length, assuming you, you but you have to have a welded, you know, you can't remove the muzzle brake. If you remove the muzzle brake, it'd be under the NFA barrel length legal limit. So that's why I say welded comp. You know, the other option is to have, you know, an AR type pistol, assuming that they continue to allow an arm brace, which is not a stock, you know, and that's, you know, certainly you can get away with a much shorter positioning, you know, system uh, if it's if it's in what's called a pistol format, which means you have to shoot it like a pistol. Right. <laughs> And uh, let's see here. I have a question. It says Jeff says, does the appendix holster you use have an optic slot, or can you get away with it, or can you get one with that? So yeah, good question. So yes, to answer. So Jeff, to answer your question, the uh, I don't know. I do have a, a second holster laying around somewhere. I probably won't get up again because I know Rich and I don't have a whole lot more time here. This gun still fits with an optic in it perfectly in this holster. Um, this this holster actually has a has a little bit of a cutout for an optic, anyways. Um, this is a little different variation, so you can see the cutout there. 
So it's it's optimized and cut out for the optic right now anyway. So yes, to answer your question, Precision makes uh, both for an optic and the SFX knife that's in this. My 1911 fits in this, although I will tell you, there's just a little bit of a wiggle, right? So not sure if you can hear that. So, and I'm, I'll actually probably indent the trigger a little bit more, tighten it, tighten it down. So, but it's got, it's got good retention. So that's all, that's all I care about. Skip says, was that a Holosun red dot on your AR? I really like the circle dot and the ACSS dots. Easy for my old eyes. Um, so let's see here. So this is, this is in fact a uh, Holosun. This is the five. 10 C. I have the 510 uh, C red as well, right? So this this particular gun. Um, and by, by the way, this this optic compare and contrast to the standard aim point patrol optics. I love these sights. They're great. You can put a battery and turn them on, leave them on for a year, no problem. Um, I've been shooting these. I tend to like the open window. It has a bigger, more open window than the aim points. Uh, but I love them both. But, you know, I tell you, uh, not promoting wholesome again. I, they probably should sponsor me as many sites as I've sold for them. That's a good site. I beat them up. I've ran them on my PCCs. I ran them on my ARs. I have three of them. Never had a single problem. Thrown the rifles down. Rained on them. Um, been really good. So, Alan says, does Wilson Combat customize M&Ps? That's a great question. Uh, currently, well, I don't, I, I don't believe we do. I'm sure we we could or maybe have some, but that's not something they, they currently do as far as I know. And uh, Jeff says, I have an issue with ambi safeties on my AR platforms under speed catching on my palm. Does Mike use ambi safeties on his ARs? Yeah, so if you look at my ambi safety here, I'm loaded and clear. So if you look at the... The right, this is actually the left side of the gun that my right thumb rides. It's a full size safety. On the opposite side, um, it's a little bit shorter, right? So you can see, I'm not sure if you could tell, there's you know, three holes there, two holes there. So that allows me to manipulate the safety and it kind of misses that part of my finger. Um, but, the, but the position I have my finger anyways, kind of curved out. This, even if I had a full size safety on the other side, it would miss my finger, right? Because when I go to the other shoulder, I can still wipe off that that short safety, and it it doesn't really hit my finger too much because the finger's pretty much out here and deliberately away from the trigger with my grip. It also has a lot to do with the grip. So these are the Wilson Combat grips. You know, if you have a different grip angle on your AR, maybe like this, like some of the original ARs had a different grip angle and a steeper angle, that may cause a more of an issue with that as well. Brot says your EDC nine is that the professional or compact grip length, aluminum or steel? Okay, where'd that one go? So this is uh, the aluminum grip, and this is a compact grip length. So I'm not sure if you can see it. It's uh, slightly shorter than the full length, and remember that's that has a that has a small carry magwell on it so if i took that magwell off it the magazine the grip length would be inside of my pinky right where compare that or contrast that to a full size grip length that extends past my pinky that's a full size 1911 right there so if that's a 40 the other one is a nine all right i saw that some of your ars had uh mounting positions for single and double point is there any one you recommend and why are we talking about slings? Yes, sir. Um, so I'm. Um, uh, uh, so this is. Um, I've, I've been a fan of the Magpul system that allows you to run a single point, and then the swivel allows me to go to either shoulder. So here's the, here's the real truth about slings. Uh, if you have a, a good two point sling, you know uh, who's the, probably the Vicker sling. I, I do like Magpul. Magpul, you could the new. The newer one, whatever is MS3, MS4, someone maybe correct me if I'm wrong. You can run it as a single point sling or you can run it as a two point sling. Um, I like this one has this, this, this set up as a two point sling, right? Or sorry, a single point sling, but I can un unhook it and run it as a two point sling if I put the adapter on it. 
I'm a fan of a single point sling, but that's simply because I'm not carrying a rifle in, in law enforcement capacity more where I may want to sling the rifle and go put hands on and handcuff. I think if, if you are doing that or that's your mission or what your, you know, operational, your operating environment dictates, then probably a good two point sling with the right mounting positions is a, is a better option. Tony says, do your PCCs have last round bolt hold open? Yeah, they, they all lock open. Yeah. Yeah. They, these PCCs, uh, when I shoot the last round, will lock, lock open. And I like that because, you know, it's a standard bolt catch for us. It's the way our bolts run. The uh, It allows me to, you know, shoot the PCC and IDPA if I want to. And I, you know, I get that bolt lock back. So, yeah. If I end up shooting an empty... I want the bolt to lock back for a little bit faster load. So yes, they lock back. Anything else, Mike, that you'd like to talk about on the Wilson Combat products? Oh man, not not really. I just uh, just check them out. Like I said, we just released uh, for those of you that are maybe looking for a carry type gun that is absolutely incredible. I can't tell, and it's on um, on YouTube. If you go to Wilson Combat their YouTube page, there's a couple instructional videos with me teaching you how to use an optic and stuff. And I'm shooting the new SFX nine. I can't tell you how impressed I was with that little gun. I, I literally can't wait to get mine. And as you can see, I have a lot of Wilson combats. I love them all, but I really look forward to getting that little gun. It's just a fantastic pistol. You mentioned it in passing, but you don't happen to have one of your Wilson combat Glocks, do you? Um, I, I do. I can get one. You want me to grab one? Yeah. Why don't you grab one? I'd like for folks to see that. And while we're waiting on Mike to come back, I want to be respectful of his time this morning. I know it's Monday morning. We all got things to do. So if you have any final questions for Mike, throw them in there. It doesn't have to be about the Wilson Combat line. Of course, Mike is a sponsored shooter for Wilson Combat. And we have a link to Wilson Combat in today's show notes. But if you have any additional questions, please post them now, and I'll try to get to them in the order that I receive them. Thank you to the 35 folks that are still with us this morning on both platforms, Shooting Performance and the American Warrior Society Facebook page. And it's the it's the American Warrior Society Facebook page, as long as our uh, Facebook overlords allow us to have it. Because after what happened last Friday during mine and Will's economic show, I wasn't sure that uh, it was going to last much longer. Dr. Fuller says, Rich, do all the best firearms instructors have goatees asking for a friend? It seems to be the case, doesn't it? Somebody should put uh, do, a, do a research study on that. Although I think, Dr. Fuller, you and I are both growing our beards out for the winter. So, Okay, Mike is back. Mike, take it away, sir. All right, so I brought a little one and I brought a big one. I wanted to show you all this one, especially those that are probably on the live show right now, because I thought you would appreciate. Let's see if I can get in the light. There we go. Can everybody see the logo here on the slide? Right back there, I guess. Right. That's our AWS logo. So if you look at that logo, it's the same logo that's behind me on the wall. So this one is. Um, uh, Wilson Combat did the, they have a laser that does this, the star patterning on the grip. Pretty awesome. Um, they actually add their logo if you want their logo. But uh, so that's got that. It's got our logo on one side. It's got the Wilson Combat logo on the top. Some of their sites. So that's a Glock 26 that I had. Uh, that was my Glock that I had them work on and do. And then the second example, kind of a unique special purpose type gun is this is a full Wilson combat slide. So I'm not sure if you can see kind of the flat top. I told them to put some interesting color on it. So this was the, that blue line to support law enforcement and to show their support because I want to be able to show that off. And uh, so you can see the Wilson combat uh, slide. This is the Gen, Gen 4 17. Um, this actually has a comp on it for some test purposes that I'm doing. Little Zev Mag, uh, I'm sorry, that's a, Terran Magwell, Terran Tactical Magwell. Thank you to Terran for that. And like I said, a lot of the Glocks I'm running, I'm running with the Delta Point Pro on it. So I'm not sure if you can see that color variation. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I like it. So absolutely gorgeous. And of course, these all have the that's the this is actually the Wilson Combat trigger. Um, so, anyways, there you go. There's your Wilson Combat Glock. Peace to all. 
Guile says, how many mags does Mike carry for EDC? And how about you, Rich? I carry um, 10 rounds in the gun, nine round magazine, one in the chamber. I carry a spare 10 round magazine. I have mags in my car and stuff like that. Yeah, and for me, I'm I'm running a G16 with a Glock 19 magazine in it, so I'm carrying 16 rounds in the gun, and I normally have a, a backup magazine or two in the truck, but I don't carry a backup magazine on me. It has its limitations. Mike, I've had you on here for almost an hour, brother, 55 minutes. Oh, how time flies. Any final thoughts, uh, things that you want to share about that? I did tell them that I put a link to Wilson Combat dot com in today's show notes so they can go there to check out wilson combat products yeah folks that's it i mean i appreciate the opportunity uh, i think they're fun to show the guns off i mean i know on on social you know people tend to say oh it's a wilson combat it'd just be nice to be able to afford a wilson combat and I, and I get that but remember you know whether it's maybe getting a wilson combat glock slide for your glock for you aws quinn members by the way that they could put the our logo your logo on the gun. If you have your own company logo, they can do that kind of stuff for you. So they can optimize your Glock. They can optimize your SIG. You can grab more of the SIG variants if you're not looking for a 1911. If you're looking for that 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 super investment, like I said, I, I can't tell you um, how good of an investment this is. The 14.7 welded comp barrel, this one is made for the suppressor. You don't have to get that if you don't want to. Um, you just can't beat them it's in terms of reliability and performance. You can't beat them. And if, if you have the opportunity to you know to invest in a wilson combat 1911 you you will love them and you know a lot of folks once again social media wherever you're listening or hearing this or watching this oh 1911 you know can you get it to run all of these guns every single one of these is about as close to 100 percent as possible not because i use special finicky ammo not because i clean my guns that's rich rich i don't clean my guns at all um they're, these guns are are as close to 100% as any gun I've owned. They they're fantastic pieces of gear. So if you have the ability to invest in one, you know, uh, can't tell you enough. And if you have uh, questions, reach out to me. Well, and I tell you, on the Wilson Combat, if if you're like me and you've owned a lot of ARs throughout the decades of your life, and you've had finicky ARs, I know there are most of them are finicky. I've yet to had a have a single stoppage with that Wilson combat AR yep. no matter the, the round type, no matter the magazine type, it just runs. And I don't know that I've ever cleaned that AR. So and I need to, but it's just amazing, man. Yeah, they are. They, they truly are. They're, they're great pieces of machinery. Yeah. Dr. Gordon Bodson says, how about a Wilson combat discount code? Uh -huh. <laughs> good, good luck with that. They actually did a, a black Friday special. If you're on their email list, they probably have it on their website. And I do think they actually offered some small discount for summer, all of their products. I don't remember what the code is. Uh, you, so good, go to wilsoncombat.com and I would just suspect they have it listed on there, get on their email list. Cause it was surprising for me to see it. Cause they, that's not a company that discounts their products very often. Gal says, always great seeing Rich and Mike together in a show. Love the subject today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, folks, uh, one last thing. Just so you know, there's going to be some specials, membership specials coming up. So if you are on our email list, look for those. Uh, another video series that I just finished with Mr. Rob Latham uh, is on special right now. You, this week, you can get 25 percent off i believe on the individual uh videos or the big series so if you go to the bigger the bigger circle.com it's also on my website but keep an eye out for some membership specials for those of you that are not coin members or have an interest in that or maybe want to be in the competitive side those will be coming out in the next few weeks joyce is a great show take care mark few says thanks guys enjoy the show mike see you at sheepdog question mark um possibly uh, also, Tony reminds us that the Rittenhouse case goes to the jury today. Stay aware, folks, and stay prepared. Yeah. Mike, thanks for coming on the show, brother. It's been uh, been cool. Thank you, man. It's been enjoyable. Got guns all over. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mike, you want to take us out? Yeah, folks, don't forget uh, the fight's coming. Be ready. <laughs>